uh, Governor Elrofai, thank you very much for the kind invitation to join you at this sixth edition of uh, the Kaduna Investment Summit, or Cardinvest. I think just listening to you, the rigor and innovation that you and your team have brought to policy formulation and implementation is clearly an exemplar for what is possible in the states and indeed what is possible in the nation. You must all be commended for the consistency that has been a strong characteristic of your administration. Cardinvest has been held annually over the past six years and has evolved over time from the launch of the development plan to the unveiling of the Kaduna Infrastructure Master Plan and the Urban Renewal Project. So this summit has become a platform, not just to market Kaduna, but Nigeria, as a compelling business destination for investment. I must also say that your efforts are, are clearly positioned to benefit maximally from the critical infrastructure development that Mr. President has committed himself to single-mindedly since the inception of our administration. So the construction of the AKK pipeline would enable the ready availability of gas for power and industries in Kaduna, while the Abuja Kaduna Kano rail line and the Abuja to Kano highway will definitely ease the movement of goods and people. For power, the Ministry of Power and the ADP are working together to ensure that construction starts on the Mando to New Kano 3030 uh, KV line enhancement. And of course, uh, your efforts with Airtel on broadband expansion, broadband connectivity expansion, will benefit from our economic sustainability plan the broadband connectivity for all by 2023. These federal government investments in these axes, complemented by the policies and investments of the Kaduna State Government, will catalyze an economic hub that will create millions of jobs and opportunities. And I think you much more eloquently presented the case for Kaduna State as the economic hub for uh, the future job creation and also for the future of economic development, not just here in this zone, but also across the country. As you are aware, one of our programs in the Economic Sustainability Plan is the Solar Niger uh, program, which is aimed at providing 5 million homes with electricity through solar systems and mini grids. In this particular regard, the NACEN, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, is being repositioned to incubate local end-to-end -end solar manufacturing and fabrication. Given our country's increasing demand for solar panels, so I think there is room for synergy here also, with the remarkable work that the uh, Kaduna State Government is doing with Blue Camel. From this project, we can see streetlights all around the city, and. Uh, Kaduna built uh, solar streetlights popping up everywhere, including Yola, Joss, Wayne, Gobe, amongst other places. I'm sure that with what is happening, uh, we may be seeing the cost of uh, developing a solid solar uh, production supply chain right uh, here in, in this state. But permit me a word or two on the theme of, the, of this conference. Uh, from last year's theme of infrastructure, industrialization, and innovation to this year's theme of towards a sustainable knowledge-based economy, there is a commendable steadiness of thought on the development pathway for this state. Indeed, the focus today, and I, I'm sure that everyone agrees, must be developing a knowledge-based economy. To briefly clarify the terminology, because there are so many different iterations of that, uh, of that expression, the knowledge economy really refers to how human capital, education, and knowledge can become productive assets or business products to be sold for profit. So this is simply the commercialization of intellectual capacity rather than 
natural resources or physical effort or physical labor. So for example, programmers developing new software and search engines for data and health workers using digital data or algorithms to improve treatments or fintech companies using technology platforms of various kinds for granting on collateralized loans and also software applications for various other financial services. It also means digital solutions for agriculture to improve yields or more effectively manage farms. Digital platforms that provide study aids and online courses for students and so on and so forth. So the trajectory of economic development has tended to be from agriculture to man and, uh, manufacturing then to services, and then as we get well there, we go to the knowledge economy. But by the sheer versatility of technology today, it is possible to leapfrog, as much easier to leapfrog, from where we are to the knowledge economy. Indeed, rather than go from stage to stage, the knowledge economy can enhance our performance and all the benefits that we can derive from agriculture, from manufacturing and services. So today we are seeing faster computing speeds and cheaper products from a time when it was exciting to be able to store 256 megabytes. We are now in an era where it is possible to store on the cloud in terabytes. Libraries of millions of volumes can be stored and retrieved within seconds. Similarly, given the cost, it was conceivable at a time to integrate batteries. It was not conceivable at a time to integrate batteries into electricity grids. Today, Tesla's mega pack battery can provide up to one gigawatt hour as 1,000 megawatts of power you know, just uh, by, just with one single battery. That's 1,000 megawatts of power. So that is possible. Here in Nigeria, all our youth-run digital businesses are making great strides. FinTech companies and other technology-enabled solutions are expanding so rapidly that the future of banking and financial services may not even belong to banks or bankers as we know them today. Companies like Paystack, which was recently acquired for $200 million, Kuda Bank, without a single physical uh, branch, Prosper, uh, another of these uh, uh, FinTech companies, that is revolutionizing banking for small businesses by tailoring banking and digital solutions, a your world that builds the platforms for trader money and market money, they are creating jobs and bringing in investments every single day. So given these strides, Nigeria is surely becoming a technology investment destination in sub-Saharan Africa. We are also seeing the impact in disruptive technology in agriculture. This uh, tomato jaws processing facility, which we will be commissioning today, with a capacity to produce tomato paste at, I'm told, 85 tons a day. And this, I'm told, is another product of card invest. Tomato jaws is helping build a model for integration of processing and subsistence farming that can be scaled across the country to solve these perennial problems of producing raw materials without knowledge-based addition. Aside from tomato girls, there are other innovative companies doing exceedingly well in the in this uh, in the technology space or technology enabled. Babangona, for example, that provides training, financial credit, and cultural inputs and harvesting and marketing support to smallholder farm is also heavily technology enabled. So this bridge between smallholder and scalable agriculture is being executed with technology in a way that strengthens the smallholder farm. But I must say, and I'm sure everyone will agree, that we are very far, very far from where we ought to be. We are very far from taking the full advantage of our young people, especially the, the millions of very young talents that we have today. The main problem is how to surmount the barriers to knowledge, to the knowledge of how do we surmount those barriers to the knowledge economy? The World Bank describes those barriers to the knowledge economy as the four pillars of the knowledge economy. The first is institutional structures 
that provide incentives for entrepreneurship and the use of knowledge. The second is availability of skilled labor and good education, a good education system. The third is access to information and communication technology, ICT infrastructure. The fourth is a vibrant innovation landscape that includes academia, the private sector, and civil society. So the knowledge economy, as the name implies, is entirely dependent on intellectual capital a workforce and talent pool that is educated, that is, that is dynamic, and is adaptable, sound, relevant, practical, problem-solving education. So science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM education, as, 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 is, uh, as is called, is crucial. The curriculum that the Federal uh, Ministry of Education is developing at the moment adds arts to that combination of subjects. So our own acronym is not STEM, it's STEAM, because we've added art stream. The task here is major. Developing an education system that will resource and support the knowledge economy, from teacher training to acquiring technology and other equipment. Clearly, we need effective planning. How do we create adequate resource capacity and capability? What will it take to train and equip enough engineers, technologists, scientists, doctors, and other products of the STEM curriculum to drive a knowledge-based economy. Thankfully, we're not alone. You know, this is a global problem. There are global shortages everywhere of technological talent. A recent analysis showed that artificial intelligence and machine learning, the talent gap for, for artificial intelligence and machine learning is about 1.2 billion, 1.2 million resources. While there are only 650 thousand professionals employable in these roles. The, the best of OECD countries have 16 scientists or researchers per 1,000 employees and spend 1 to 3 percent of GDP on research and development. But where do we stand on that scale? How do we accelerate our progress? With the global gaps in talent, well-planned training programs could even see us, see Nigeria, becoming a talent hub for technical, for technical talent, for technical expertise. And this was proven with the success of Andela. Andela, of course, is a local Nigerian, is a, is a, is, well, Andela Nigeria is a Nigerian company. Although Andela is more international these days. In developing and placing, this is a company that develops and places software engineering talent. And this can be replicated across a broad range of STEM disciplines. So it is possible the companies like Candela that are already doing so much work, developing software engineers, developing all manner of other the programmers and all manner of other talents, it's possible to do even more and to increase the numbers. Some ideas that can be explored include support for on-the-job tailored training to accelerate talent development and augment conventional schooling. For example, I understand that Blue Camel has a solar installation training facility on this industrial campus where it trains hundreds of students a year. Also, the curricula in trainings could have a standard knowledge set that must be learned prior to specialization. These standard principles should support mobility of talent across jobs so that they can adapt, adapt to changes in a knowledge-based economy. I think also the Kashim Ibrahim Fellowship, which Yay. the that the uh, fellowship which the Kaduna State Government uh, initiated a few years ago exposes fellows uh, to thought leaders and experts and to practical experience through rotational job programs and community service. This is also an example. It's an example of the type of initiatives needed to train high caliber talents for the knowledge-based future. These kinds of fellowships are crucial. These kinds of fellowships are important because they take people out of the school environment, out of the learning environment, and bring them into proper practical learning environments. There's a need to expand the, the, these sorts of initiatives and replicate them all over the country. It's also uh, noteworthy that though this program was conceived and sponsored by the Kaduna State Government, it is open to all qualified Nigerians anywhere uh, who live anywhere in the country. 
But before I close, let me uh, salute again the progress uh, that has been made with the Galaxy Mall, uh, the ground breaking ceremony, which I attended uh, some time back. I'm looking forward to walking through uh, the relocated site today. Uh, just as I'm equally pleased to be going to the Kasiwan Magani market to see the great work that the Kaduna Market Development and Management Company has done in repositioning uh, that market. Of course, uh, I would like also to see the solar power plant built for the market through the Rural Education uh, Fund and its impact on the beneficiaries. Uh, also, I, uh, of course, I'm told that we're also at some point. I think it's for tomorrow. I'm not so sure whether that's the day. Uh, the Dangote uh, Project of the Mobile Factory. Uh, and I must say that we look forward to the completion of that project and the return of automotive or automobile production uh, to Kaduna here. There's so much going on and uh, so much to talk about. So I must again commend the governor, uh, Governor Nasir Rufai, for brilliant innovation, but more importantly, for sticking to a plan and for making sure that the plan uh, gets results. And also the Deputy Governor, Haji Abarabe, uh, is my the Executive Council, uh, the Executive Secretary for Kadipa, Haji Omar Aboki, and uh, the organizing team for Kadi Invest for the great work, including successfully organizing this exciting investment summit. Let me reiterate that the federal government will support and encourage your efforts every step of the way. And we are committed to, as much as is possible, creating a stable and predictable macroeconomic uh, business environment, providing infrastructure, and of course, ensuring security. For we realize that in addition to uh, genetic interventions, jobs and social protection are vital for security and sustainable development. And we are, as you mentioned, making accelerated efforts to enhance security across the country and in this region particularly, especially working uh, with the state governors in many of the worst affected uh, states. God bless Kaduna State, God bless the federal republic.